I think we can all agree that mockups are very important. We want something like this. Not like this. Ooh, you suck! You see the difference? One looks like it's just pasted, there's no shadow effects or reflection effects, whilst the other does. It looks like it's actually part of the picture. So, let's show you how to make amazing mockups for your Etsy listings. So to begin, we'll be using Midjourney to create our realistic mockups so that we can later edit our wall art into the mockup for our listings. If you've not used Midjourney before, click the video in the top right corner and we'll be able to show you how to use it. But once you've got it set up, all you need to do is type slash imagine and then put in the prompt that you want and describe the type of setting that you want to have for your mock-up. Now these are some ones that I've generated, but I'll be using this one here. Now once you've found a mock-up that you're happy with, it's now time to edit it in either Photoshop or you can simply follow these steps with Photop, which is a free online alternative to Photoshop. Now, the first thing you want to do is start clearing up the canvas. We don't want any pictures on it or any text. We want to get rid of it and just make it white. So with the rectangle tool, just drag it over any text that you might have, go to edit, click fill, and then change the option to content aware. And you'll see how that changes to the background to a nice clear white background, like every other part of the frame. Now, if you have any major images in your frame that you need to get rid of, use the Polygon Lasso tool, draw over it, and then go to Edit, Fill, and like before, Content Aware. Now, most of that's gone, but you can see here it's not perfect. So just keep repeating the process and fine tuning certain areas and shadows to make sure that it looks nice and normal again. I'll just speed up this process for you here, but you can see how powerful this tool can be to really make it look empty. And now we're on to step three, we'll be importing the generated wall art. And that we're done that, you can see it looks great. We're going to switch now to the pen tool and essentially just click in each individual corner of the inner contents of the frame. So I'll speed up this process, but just make sure you get as close to the corners as possible. And once you finish that, go to the bottom right and click and click create a layer mask. And you can see when I turn off the background, you've just created a, a, a mask of the actual frame itself. Now what we're going to do is now switch to the rectangle tool and essentially just draw a rectangle as best you can over the actual frame itself. I'm going to change the color to black um, just so it's easier to work with. And then once you've done that, just right click on the rectangle you've made and click create a smart object. Now for ease for the next step, I'm actually going to just change the opacity of the rectangle to about 50. Now with the rectangle selected, hold Ctrl and T and you'll be able to transform the rectangle. Uh, now right click and distort and what we're going to do now is move each of the corners of the rectangle to the corner of the frame. The frame that is created by Midjourney isn't always perfectly rectangular um, and have right angle edges so just move it so it matches up. On photo B, just go to edit and transform and then move it like before. Now, if we double click on the smart object, the rectangle, we can drag in and paste our wall art that we've created and just fill it to match the, the full size of the rectangle. Now, if we go to file and save at the top corner and switch back to our mockup, you'll see it'll replace the rectangle. Now, it doesn't look great just now, so drag the mask above the rectangle and change its blending mode to multiply. you see the shadow and the lighting effects will stay alongside the wall art, giving it a really realistic look. Now you may want to stop there, but for even more photorealism, if you double click the wall art or the smart object and then click drop shadow, you can play with some settings here just to add an extra layer of depth. Now just make sure that you match the shadows to the shadows of that in the mock-up so you can see there that it's the the sun's in the left hand side and the shadows are casting to the right so just make sure you ma make sure you match that you can then do uh, inner glow as well just to to make sure make the edges of the art look a wee bit slightly washed out perhaps because it is beside the sun and it's maybe reflecting a bit more so you can just play around with these and create some subtle settings to make it look even more photorealistic 
Now you can see when I turn off the effects on the rectangle, you can see the difference the shadow makes. So I think it looks really good. Step four, we've made the shadows. Now we're going to make some reflections. Now for another tip, if you want to add a layer of reflection or a gloss effect to the wall art, what I'm going to do here is duplicate the background and just bring it to the top. Now all I'm going to do is click Control T and essentially I'm going to stretch it down to size um, the size of the wall art and just kind of match it to the canvas size as well. Now what I'm going to do is change the blending mode of this to multiply or screen. Works out really good. I'm now going to click on uh, levels at the bottom and using some of these tabs here, play with the settings. You don't want it to be too bright or too dark, but you just want to add a, a slight, kind of almost a slight sheen or gloss effect by giving it uh, an extra layer on top, a very faint layer on top. So play around with some settings until you've got one that you like. Now, if you go to filter and add a, a Gaussian blur, you can blur out the edges a bit more so it looks like there's a bit of reflection there and giving you a sheen effect. Now to add another layer of reflection and another sheen effect, you can just create a new layer with the pen tool. Just make sure that you get the fill and change it to a white color. You want it to be um, white and then draw a, and then start drawing a rough shape that looks similar to this. So it's almost like a slight curved shape, um, a wedge shape on the side of this frame. You'll see it comes out and looks like this. Now, if you go to the brush tool and change the pixels so it's quite large and at the top, change the opacity to something like 30%. What we can do now is click on the shape that we just created with the pen tool. Now, if we actually change the opacity of that shape that we created, you can see almost like there's a slight sheen and again, another gloss effect uh, on top of the frame. So if we work back from the start, guys, we've obviously taken the mid journey mock-up We've cleared the canvas. We then added on our wall art. We added some shadows. We put back the original lighting effect from the, from the original mock-up. We created a sheen effect. Um, and you can see here, guys, how that looks so much realistic than from when we started. And if you save this, you can use it as a template and just change a smart object every time you want to use a new wall art. But you can really tell the difference all these steps make to make it look really realistic. And your listings can really pop and stand out on Etsy.